IndyCar teams held their first test of the 2021 campaign at Sebring International Raceway today. Because there is no official IndyCar test planned in the preseason, this is one of our first indicators of how the drivers will be stacking up against one another. And of particular interest was Jimmy Johnson, seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion who will be participating on the road and street circuits in 2021. How did he do? We'll talk about that and much more in this video. And so I begin by apologizing because I'm pretty stupid. For some reason, I thought the testing at Sebring was taking place next Monday, when I will, of course, be in Florida for the Rolex 24, and I thought I'd be able to bring you at-track coverage of that testing. Well, as it turns out, the testing is this week, and I don't leave until Wednesday, so that makes that pretty much impossible to have at-the-track coverage. However... I do have some people on the ground who have been able to give me some information, particularly the lap times and the, uh, the way the seven drivers at this test stacked up. So we know who was fastest and we know who was slowest, at least in an unofficial capacity. Of course, with testing, you never know for sure uh, who's running what. And, and obviously, people aren't going for a, a particular lap time or even to just go fast. It's There's so many different objectives with testing, it's really hard to know for sure where people stack up and where they don't. But we've got a pretty good idea based on these times. Now, uh, there's going to be a lot of content coming in the next couple of days, and particularly tomorrow. I've mentioned that there is a fifth Penske IndyCar Indy 500 entry that will be happening. Well, as it turns out, uh, there is a media advisory for tomorrow, and apparently they are announcing the fifth Penske car. Now, it's going to be involving the diversity and change effort uh, with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. My sources, and uh, Adam Stern has also come out now and said that his sources believe it is a female-driven uh, effort. Uh, now, whether that means it's actually a female driver, whether it's a female team owner, we know Jackie Heinrecker is looking at doing just that, or whether it's a female crewed team, uh, there's a female element here. That is really the only thing that I don't know, is the driver. Um, they've kept that very, very under wraps, which, as you guys know, originally made me think that, hey, that could be a really major star driver, but well, still could be. But I'm, I'm leaning very much now towards a, a female driver. And one of my sources that was particularly adamant about this about a month and a half ago, and I didn't listen to you, and I should have. You know who you are. This is your credit <laughs> for that. But, uh, but this seems to be what's happening. Uh, there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes. I guess I'll say it here because it's probably going to come out tomorrow. Uh, Penske Racing uh, lease has leased the Hunkos racing equipment and it's sitting in their shop right now for this effort. So there's a lot of things moving behind the scenes. We're going to know where quite a few entries stand for the Indy 500 starting tomorrow. And, uh, I do have some opinions on it. I'll wait to, for the details to give them in more fleshed out. I want to hear the pitch first before I really give a, a super hardcore opinion on it, especially want to know who the driver is. So we'll be finding that out tomorrow. But let's get back to what we were supposed to be talking about in this video, which is IndyCar testing at Sebring. Now, there were supposed to be several teams there today. Not all those teams ran. I know Andretti Autosport uh, was, was there. Uh, they didn't run, according to timing and scoring at least. Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan, supposed to be there, didn't run. Uh, Dale Coyne Racing, supposed to be there, didn't run. Uh, AJ Foyt Racing was there and ran. Chip Ganassi Racing was there and ran. And... Uh, Carlin Racing was there with one car and also ran. So they were testing at Sebring, and a lot of people ask why IndyCar tests at Sebring. And the, the reason for that is the track is very, very bumpy. Now, they don't run the full circuit, and that's really the reason why we don't see uh, any kind of an effort to do an IndyCar race proper there. It just so happens that the short circuit, and hopefully I'll have like a, a circle on the map of where of what actually this track looks like, the short circuit is the closest approximation teams can test at uh, with some sense of a street circuit layout. So when we're looking at these times we're about to look at, keep in mind that we're looking at something that is approximating a street circuit. All right, so 
these are the times, these are the seven drivers and cars that took to the track. Now, no real surprise, Scott Dixon out on top for Chip Ganassi Racing. Uh, the lap times, again, you know, they're not super representative and you don't really know what everybody was trying, but I'll put them up there anyway. Uh, at least at the time that I was sent this information, it was at a 52-3. Uh, Marcus Erickson was second. Uh, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. He was one-tenth off of uh, Scott Dixon. Alex Pillow, in his first time with Chip Ganassi Racing, uh, in 2021 anyway, I think he tested for the team at Barber late 2020, uh, right there with Erickson, so just a tenth off of Scott Dixon. Sebastian Bourdais, in his return to full-time IndyCar competition, was another tenth off the, uh, the third Ganassi car, most of the slowest Ganassi car, but there is, of course, a slower Ganassi car, as you guys can see. Max Chilton for Carlin, who I don't think has been officially confirmed as of yet uh, for the IndyCar series in 2021, but he is on the board here, uh, some five-tenths of a second or half a second off of uh, Scott Dixon's best time. And bringing up the rear, Dalton Kellett, AJ Foyt Racing, recent sign uh, driver for the full season, uh, a full second off of Scott Dixon's pace. And bringing up the absolute rear, 1.3 seconds off of Scott Dixon, Jimmy Johnson. And before we get into that, I do want to play a clip that was posted to the IndyCar uh, social media account. I think it was Instagram, uh, where Jimmy gave a little bit of insight into what he was uh, doing and planning today. And then we're going to talk about these times and how Jimmy stacked up against the competition. Hey, it's IndyCar rookie Jimmy Johnson here at Sebring, uh, working on our preseason testing. It's much needed laps for me in the race car. Really enjoying uh, ripping around here in the Carbonara Chip Ganassi car. Other drivers are here on course as well, so nice measuring stick to myself. But the first half of the day has gone really well, and looking forward to more laps coming up. And so if you're a Jimmy fan out there, I don't think this is panic time right now. We have to remember, we have to always keep in mind when looking at this stuff and looking at how Jimmy's performing, is that he is a true rookie when it comes to these types of open-wheel racing cars. The fact that he's 1.3 seconds off of Scott Dixon, who... From most or by most accounts, and obviously by the stats, he's third on the all-time win list. He's one of the best, not only in this era to do it, he's one of the best ever to do it. So the fact that an equal equipment Jimmy is that close with that much less experience, he is doing a, a really good job. And I think he's only going to improve. And he has been very I think I've said this before, I don't know if I've said it in a video, but he's kind of the opposite of Fernando Alonso in what Alonso's approach was when he came to IndyCar, which was, I'm going to do one race, and I'm only going to focus on that race, and I'm not going to run the rest of the series. And I'm not really going to do any kind of real prep work or seat time work to get better at this. It wasn't like he went and ran a USAC sprint car race, you know, to, to run ovals. He, he stayed just focusing on the Indianapolis 500. Jimmy Johnson, on the other hand, he's been at Sebring, believe it or not, before IndyCar was there, he was driving around an F3 car. So he is getting behind the wheel of whatever he can get behind. Of course, he's going to do the Rolex 24 in a high-powered, high-downforce Cadillac DPI uh, for Action Express. Now, is that going to directly translate? No, but I think a lot of the guys who are typically fast in IndyCar racing are also fast in those types of cars. So there's got to be some sort of transfer between those high-downforce uh, bespoke racing machines. So I, I'm, I'm not super, super worried about uh, Jimmy because he's really not that far off of Kellett, and Kellett's really not that far off of everybody else, half a second off of Chilton. But again, Kellett's kind of a, a rookie in his own right. Now, he, granted, has a lot more uh, road course racing experience in these types of cars. But again, I, I, the field does look very close. Again, we're going off of seven cars here. We still haven't seen what Andretti Autosport is going to do. We haven't seen what Dale Coyne Racing is going to do. Uh, we, we don't even know who's going to be driving for Dale Coyne Racing yet, for sure. Um, but we've got a decent baseline uh, to kind of go off of here. And it is going to be an uphill battle for Jimmy Johnson. There's no doubt about it. But I do think he's going to get it. And once he gets it, it's going to click. And he's, I think he's going to be right there. There's a reason he signed up for two seasons at least in this car. He's confident that he will get there eventually. 
even if it takes a season and a half. I think he will be there uh, sooner rather than later. So let me know what you think of IndyCar testing down in the comments section below. Uh, and big announcement at IMS tomorrow. We'll have a lot to discuss there because uh, certainly anytime uh, a Roger Penske entry, whether it, you know, whoever it's for, that's a big deal. So this is a big deal. We'll have to see where all the chips eventually lie with that. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsport and IndyCar content, and I will see you in the next video.